Hey guys, this is Exam Help again, and uh, I'm just going to look over DNA and chromosomes. Well, uh, in eukaryotic cells, there are such things as chromosomes, which are just basically condensed DNA. So, double helix, the double helix DNA molecule is wrapped around proteins, and then it's wrapped around, wrapped around kind of like a telephone coil that don't exist anymore. Uh, they're wrapped around and wrapped around to form these chromosomes are very condensed they're looped and looped so it can condense a lot of DNA into just one chromosome so what does a chromosome look like so here we have a chromosome here the circular bit here that's called a centromere so this is just uh, holding the two little bits apart and these little little ones are called chromatids so the individual part of the chromosome are called chromatids so if we get a, a little chromatid it's going to look just something like just a straight line like that so during uh, cell replication these chromatids are uh, uh, pulled apart uh, by uh, things called centromeres and spindle fibers to have these individual chromatids as so so how many of these chromosomes do you reckon we have well it actually does vary from organism to organism so for one organism it might be 72 for another it might be 8 uh, but for humans we have 46 chromosomes um, you may have noticed all these numbers I've said are um, even. And this is because, uh, for a particular reason. So as you can see, we've got two chromosomes here. These look very, very similar. They're identical, so co uh, copied and pasted them. So they're exactly the same. This means, well, it doesn't directly mean but it can mean that they're what we call homologous pairs this means they're the same so they go together so as you can see they're homologous pairs this means that they contain the same genes in the same place on the chromosome so particular chromosomes contain different genes for particular uh, polypeptides so if you had a homologous pair you would expect to find the same the genes that are contained in that particular chromosome in the same place on that chromosome so say if we had a hair color uh, gene here for let's say we'll say blue eyes if we had a hair color chrome, uh, gene there on this homologous pair you would expect to find the same gene we might have uh, brown eye gene not blue hair, hair blue, uh, blue eyes uh, brown eye gene at the same place on this chromosome so this just means that they uh, are basically the same um, why do we have two chromosomes in a normal body cell this is because we get one from the mother and one from the father so as you can see here, we've got one blue eye gene from the mother, and we've got one brown eye gene from the father. So there can be the same kind of gene, but it might code for a different protein to be produced. And that depends on the uh, genes that are involved in the double helix shape that um, of the DNA. We just need to recognise, however, that by determining the same genetic characteristic so the state holding the same genes does not mean that the chromosomes are identical so we could have many different genes uh, that are the same on the two chromosomes but they could code for different proteins to be produced they could code for different amino acids so therefore the chromosomes themselves aren't identical they're just homologous pairs this is where the word allele comes in, or allele, however you want to say it. This is how the word's spelt, allele. Um, an allele 
is just a different form of the same gene. So the blue eyes here, we've got two different alleles. So the same gene, but different forms of the same gene. So an individual, so I have inherited one gene from my mother or one gene from my father. So anyone will inherit one gene from the mother, one gene from the father because of sexual uh, sexual reproduction. Um, the combining of two gametes. Um, so I've inherited one from my mother, one from my father. So I've inherited two alleles from my parents, one allele each. So one allele from my mother, one allele from my father. Um, so each gene code the same kind of same kind of protein produced. However, an allele is different from a gene in the fact that allele codes for a different polypeptide to be produced has a different base sequence um, so the amino acid will be different so what happens if the base sequence of the allele given to the individual what happens if that creates a protein that isn't actually particularly functional so this this happens with uh, things like lactose intolerance and stuff like that where enzymes produced by the allele passed on from generation to generation the enzyme produced doesn't function properly this is because the uh, as the base sequence has changed the amino acid sequence in the primary structure of the protein has changed which then leads to a different tertiary structure the tertiary structure being the shape of the uh, active site being formed so therefore if the active site is isn't the right shape for the uh, substrate to fit in then substrate complexes uh, substrate uh, active site substrate complexes will not form therefore the enzyme will not function properly this can have serious consequences for the organism through natural selection though uh, this kind of non-functional allele will be washed out but it is still present in many different organisms it's just an example of lactose intolerance that's just an example of what can happen in humans so that was exam help um, I, I hope that helps that's just going over DNA and chromosomes how uh, the chromosome structure is what homologous chromosomes are what an allele is um, and stuff like that. I hope that helped and uh, thank you for watching.